before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Now, we sometimes say, I know you, in different senses. We meet somebody in the street that we haven't, uh, not quite sure about, and then all of a sudden it clicks, oh, I know you. Yes, and that's quite a pleasant sense. And other times, we might say, and the pupil comes into the headmaster's office, and the headmaster will come and says, well, I know you. And of course, that can spell trouble. And so we know too, sometimes between two people, there can be a deep and an intimate knowledge where someone looks into the other person's eyes and says, I really know you. And that can be a gesture of love. Now, the word that is so often used in the Bible for God knowing us is a word of intimacy, that he actually knows us in great detail. And this is so amazing. This was amazing for Jeremiah because at times when he prophesied, he felt alone. He felt forsaken because if ever a prophet was a failure, Jeremiah was. He prophesied to a rebellious nation that ended up in captivity. They put him down a pit. They wanted him out of the way because they didn't want to listen to him. And he must have been so discouraged and so disheartened. But God said, I know you. And you know, that's a wonderful thing for us to be able to read. You might say, though, I don't want God to know me and so on. Well, I'm so sorry, but he does know you. And you see, the third thing that comes out of it is that because God has created us and God knows us, we're answerable to him. We are answer. We will have to give an answer one day to the wonder of creation that he has made with you and with me. We have to give an answer. Uh, I have, for instance, I used to go to Russia a lot, and I've got two favourite Russian hats. This is my old one, and this is my favourite, my best one. But my Russian friends over the years, as I went, they said, oh, Dennis, you shouldn't be wearing that. It just makes you look like an old Russian. And so they gave me an upmarket one, which, of course, works very well, and it certainly does the job and so on. But when I'm away from my friends, I wear the old one. But you see, I still do wear the new one because I know that one day they say, oh, what do you think of the hat? How was it? I have to be able to answer to them for what they gave me and say, yes, it worked very well. It keeps the cold out. And you see, God has made us so that one day we will have to answer to him for the life that he has given us. And you see, we can with joy give an answer when we look to his son who came and lived on this earth of ours, a perfect life, who fulfilled all God's righteousness and then died on the cross to take away our sin, that sin which mars our lives, our sin which ruins us and separates us from God, that sin which causes us to tremble at the concept of the day of judgment or else in a cavalier fashion to try and push away any thought of God. No, no, he died for our sin. And so therefore, in looking to him and saying, Lord Jesus, I thank thee, that thou hast made me in God, that thou hast made me for thyself. And I thank thee for dying on the cross to take away my sin. I pray that you will forgive me and that you will lead me in the way everlasting. Yes, God said to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And he says that to you today. And how I hope and pray that you will therefore respond and look to him through Christ and say, Lord, you know me. Be merciful to me, a sinner, and bless me with thy wonderful salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. May it be so.